a little while ago, Equestria Daily opened a discussion about what good habits the Brony community has picked up from watching the show. I knew right away that this was going to be an interesting read, and I finally found the time to bring you my thoughts on the discussion. I was not surprised to see a lot of people divulging how they obtained an example to help better themselves in their physical, mental, and interpersonal health because I've seen so many of these stories before. I was also not surprised to see a lot of people talking about their creativity being awoken with inspiration drawn from Friendship is Magic. But let's take a look at some of the more interesting posts and see how else my new favorite cartoon has managed to influence the lives of others. Sky Slicer says, I became a vegetarian, stopped pirating, became really careful to stop lying, and help stop deer hunting in my area. Now hold it right there. Hunting is a very important thing. When done right, it can teach discipline, tracking, marksmanship, firearms maintenance, appropriate context for the use of firearms, and responsible handling of such tools, all of which are skills that everyone should know. In some areas of the country, such as the town I grew up in, deer hunting is an important part of the ecosystem because overpopulation becomes an issue for the deer, their competitors, their predators, and human traffic because they cause a lot of car accidents. All that being said, I'm curious to know where you stop deer hunting and why. But the poster continues. I guess the only bad thing now is that I'm a crazy pony fan and have made my home into a shrine for ponies. Well, perhaps it is a bad thing and perhaps it isn't. In all honesty, I'd have to know you personally for a while and see it for myself in order to make that call. PJA Brony says, I gave up on reading politics. Ponies make me happy, politics make me angry, so ponies win. Well, this is alright if you need to de-stress from politics for a little while, but you shouldn't ever give up on paying close attention to what's going on in current events. They make everyone angry, but if you turn your back on them, they will undoubtedly turn back on you. It's this type of complacency that is why a lot of people in power are able to get away with so much treason. Destroying Me says, I now have both amazing dreams and daydreams about ponies. Huh. Maybe that's counterproductive. Well, I'm quite glad for you and actually a little bit jealous as I've only got half of this down. Just try to not let your daydreams be a distraction at work or school and you'll be all set. Weather Brony says, I have realized who my true friends are and to love forgive and forget no matter how much time it takes. There are a lot of people at my school who gossip and cause drama, but I'm not like that. I'm better than that, and I know that being with real bronies who love and care about me is way better. <laughs> it seems as though I can't have a simple friendship without some sort of rumor scandal or drama taking place, so I stay away from those people and stay with my fellow good brony friends. Oh, I'm quite familiar with those feelings. I'm glad you've learned how to identify your real friends though, and rest assured that from here on out as the years go by, those quote unquote friends of yours will weed themselves out if you don't stop associating with them altogether. Just be warned of the possibility that there might not be any left when it's done, which, speaking from experience, is not fun in the least bit. But don't worry too much because it seems as though you've got yourself on the right path and already have a few true friends to fall back on. Bluntly Toku said, Dude. I used to smoke weed and just go about my daily life. Now I smoke weed and watch ponies. It made me a much friendlier stoner, dude. Not cool. More Apple Twitter says to party with no pants. Oh, that's cool, I guess. Wait, 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 what? Movie Mare says, I made an extra effort to be more cheerful about life. Smile and you'll get others to smile in return. I also put aside a prejudice that I had that a character needs to have a tragic sob story in order to be interesting. This was a long-held prejudice of mine. Whenever I saw a character that had no tragedy, I instantly labeled them as boring and not worthwhile. Then came ponies, and I realized that it wasn't tragic backstories that made characters interesting. It was their personalities themselves, how they interacted, and etc. And through this, I also learned that you can have a casual slice of life story with a happy ending and still have it interesting because it's about the characters and how they respond to situations. Basically, it just rewired my entire perception of what made a good character, which is huge. After all, how much further down the line would I have had to go until I assumed people around me had to have a tragic sob story in order to be interesting and worthwhile to get to know? Well, this last sentence is a distinct possibility, and I have seen it happen before, so I'm very glad you learned this lesson. I just wish a large percentage of fanfiction writers could do the same thing. Word Nazmaros said, Is holding things in my mouth much more often a good habit? No. No, it is not. 
Metal Gear Pony says, Before, I was really into a lot of pretty violent stuff. Then, ponies came in. The change wasn't overnight, but it did happen. I gradually started enjoying games and movies of a lot less violent nature. However, the biggest change is that ponies got me my very sweet girlfriend. Aww, isn't that sweet? <sighs> no. I am the master of my jealous rage, and I shall not lose my grasp a second time. One day, I met a girl much like Derpy. She was very cute and seemed enthusiastic about me. She wanted to go on a date, but it turned out that she has a very slight mental disability. She can still hold a job and all, but still. I told her I'd think it over, and when I got home, I sat down and did a bit of meditating. Could this really work out, I thought to myself. But then I looked up and saw the derpy picture on my computer and thought, you know what, no, I think this could definitely work. I wouldn't say no to derpy just because her eyes are odd or because she's a tad absent-minded. This girl is just a little bit different and there is nothing wrong with that. So now we're dating. Something that would not have happened before ponies. And as it turns out, she's pretty good at cooking so long as she has a recipe. This is awesome. Steve Wilton says, I now study a lot. However, this habit has caused me to start smoking and increase my usual weekly coffee intake to up to 20 cups. Well, this may be good for your brain in the short run if you're merely looking to improve your grades, or in the long run if you can actually retain the information, which is something I've never been very good at. However, there's no way that this can be good for your body, and over time, your physical state can very well affect your mental health. Just be sure to keep that in mind as you go forward. Nightshine Brony says, Well, the biggest one is kind of awkward, but I should probably mention it. Ponies killed my porn habits. There but for the grace of God go I, my friend. Other less awkward habits I've picked up are writing fanfiction, writing music, and being even more open-minded than I was before. And for the grand finale, a greater appreciation of memories and a new outlook on life in that I now constantly try to appreciate my life as it passes by instead of letting it pass without a second thought as to how I'll look back on it later. He's got the right idea! Hollow Pony says, I've learned nothing. It's entertainment, not a life changer. I watch a show like this because for the 22 minutes it takes to watch, I can forget that I belong to a species that has no problem shooting a 13 month old kid in the face or can take women and children down to a river, slit their throats, and throw them in like there were so many sacks of garbage. A show like this lets me forget for a little while what a crappy world we live in and how thanks to an ever increasing number of psychopaths running it, it's only going to get worse. I knew going into this that it was only a matter of time until I found the misanthropic comments. And while it's unfortunate that there is some level of truth to his statements, I highly disagree with this pessimistic attitude on it and I'm tempted to assume that this pessimism causes him to become complacent rather than try to better himself in the world around him. Then, a user by the name of Fogtrot responds with the following. The problem is that real psychopaths don't commit crimes more frequently than mentally healthy people. It's a common myth about mental disorders and the frightening truth is that Hitler, Stalin, or Breivik were most likely perfectly sane. He may have a point here, but it's also believed that a lot of people in history's list of monsters, democide, and genocide committers had various forms of mental illness and even sexually transmitted diseases that can affect one's brain, but I'd be very open to a discussion and partnered research on the statistics relevant to this statement. Regardless, Fogtrot continues, I believe it's more of a bad education, prejudice, and feelings of injustice that made them the persons they are today. But why should we even distinguish between a psychopath and a murderer? The reason is that the former had no choice while the latter became who they are at the end of a thought process that could have been changed. That is, unless the person engaged in activities that could degrade one's mental health, in which case yes, it was still a choice. But that's all assuming that it ever isn't a choice to begin with. Mental instability and lack of conscience doesn't take away your options, it just makes it more difficult to make the right choices. However, this point is somewhat irrelevant due to the fact that Fogtrap believes most people who are violent are not also mentally ill. Which brings me back to my previous point made as to what the statistics on this actually are. We are a curious species indeed. Yet not because our actions are so contradictory, but because each of us is capable of becoming an incredibly different person formed by our own life experiences. We are determined to some extent by our biology, culture, society, family, school, and friends. It's not an excuse, more so an explanation. Terrible people are morally poor. As Socrates once said, if one practically knows what is good, one will always act in such manner as to achieve it. Well, 
people we consider the worst are at the same time misguided, ignorant, and lacking of knowledge. As for the show not being a life changer, it may not be a gospel or a philosophical dissertation, but it does tremendous good in reminding me of fundamental questions that I stopped asking long ago, thus increasing my conscience. Overall, these are two very interesting points of view that these two posters have presented. Dark Kivett says, The MLP forum's regulations helped me become a nicer person. Since watching the show and temporarily taking a hiatus from a forum that is a hundred times more cynical, my debating skills have improved and I know that I can formulate good opinions without the need to resort to constant exclamations. I was a good debater already, but I was too forceful in accusing with unnecessary language. Nowadays, I use a heck of a lot less of that and use my articulation and logic to convey my argument instead. Well, I'm glad to know that you're improving, but it should still be pointed out that one is not a good debater when they resort to these negative tendencies at all. That's more or less an angry person with an opinion of some kind, also known as the vast majority of YouTube and various mainstream news comments sections. But keep up the good work, and I'll look forward to having a good discussion with you someday soon. Lady Twiley says, I've changed my perspective on guys. I thank most male bronies for enlightening me by putting themselves out there and being open about their interests. Prior to observing this fandom, I thought most guys were not as emotional or sensitive as females tend to be. I also thought they did not appreciate female characters unless they were sex symbols. Let me tell you that I was very glad to be wrong. Though I know not everyone is like this, I am speaking from what I have experienced. It's here that I'm tempted to guess that this poster was experiencing a lot of video game and entertainment culture, which tends to look down even on their heroines and characters that are supposed to be the leading female roles. These things get over-sexualized in one way or another more often than not. They also tend to be characterized based on female stereotypes or while trying to go against such stereotypes for largely inadequate and underdeveloped reasons. I too bear witness to a lot of strange sexism in video game culture while men are gaming with each other and especially if they're gaming with a female. It often happens on such a vulgar level that it makes me wonder what their thoughts on women actually are if they have not already openly admitted their sexist beliefs. I never understood why someone would think this way in the first place though. These same sexist gamers often complain about having trouble finding a girlfriend. I won't speak to her personal experiences as I don't know what they are, but I am curious as to the specifics of why she thought so low of men. Is she a gamer who experiences the aforementioned situation on a regular basis? That alone could leave a lot of people jaded if they don't properly steel themselves against it. Or was it something closer to home and within her personal life? Was there perhaps a combination of factors? Or does it not even matter anymore now that she has some positive male interaction in her life thanks to being a brony? Another poster, however, showed that this works both ways. As RaveBrony42 says, I used to constantly make sexist jokes and comments and in general had a very low opinion of women. Now I can't even stand to hear my friends make those comments. I'm tempted to assume that this was brought on by a lack of positive female interaction in this poster's life. Again, this could have been brought on by the objectifying nature and portrayal of most women in entertainment culture as well as a lack of a good female role in his life such as a caring mother, sister, or friend. If this is the case, I'd chance saying that seeing the main six as the balanced female characters that they are is what helped him see potential for good where he had not seen it before. Luna for Life says, Ponies have been very effective. Each character I can relate to and each one gives me inspiration and motivation to do better in life. I've become the leader of my friends. I try to be a kind, loyal, generous, honest, and funny friend that always tries to be the best that she can be. I've been able to give advice to my friends based on what I've learned from the show. I have been more open-minded and less judgmental of people and I have been able to see the best in people at the worst of times. More surprisingly, I've become closer to God and my Christian faith. Friendship is Magic has actually taught me the compassion and optimism it takes to be a Christian. As a result, I've become more active in my church and am currently trying to help one of my friends become closer to God as well. So awesome. This is interesting to me because in a way, it's opposite to a point I'm going to make in a couple of minutes. Whereas my faith is what gets me to appreciate ponies on a much deeper level, for this poster, it's ponies that helped her rediscover an appreciation for her faith. The Astrolite says, I learned to clap to cartoon ponies, laugh out loud. You should be ashamed of yourself. Zero Core writes, these days, when I see a situation happening, however big or small, I cycle through the virtues represented by the elements of harmony in my head and act upon the one that I think fits the situation the best. For example, if I see someone in a bad mood, I'll use laughter to cheer them up, as well as kindness and generosity if I can fit them in. 
Thanks to doing that, I've managed to break up a few fights and heal a few emotional wounds, or at least managed to get the individual some closure in a failing relationship without resorting to violence and screaming. Also, even though my general distaste for humanity remains, this show has made me think that there could be a chance to improve a few things at some point, but only to a small amount without either genetic reprogramming to work out the bad instincts or robotic augmentations to erase the organic problems completely. <laughs> Just a quick tip, my friend. Firstly, genetic reprogramming and robotic augmentations would not be the solution, they would just make it worse. Most people who believe the singularity is a viable solution usually don't have good intentions for the human race. You may want to revisit Brave New World, 1984, and The Matrix for examples on what happens when what you've mentioned comes into play. In truth, there is no solution short of complete divine intervention. This little bit that each person can do to make the world around them better is all we've got. The key is to do your best at all times and be satisfied with whatever results you can yield. That being said, let's get back on track. The show has also given me a sort of fantasy world to escape to whenever real life becomes too stressful or sad. It's not a complete paradise, but it seems like a world that can actually work and where good situations seem possible and within the grasp of everyone who tries to be good. Unlike here on Earth where it seems that the wicked ways will always win and greed is rampant over almost every last aspect of society. However, this can cause me some stress because it disrupts the fantasy whenever Hasbro does something that's not the brightest idea. But the main show itself, combined with the fan fictions that others and I write, creates a really good escape from reality whenever it becomes too hard. Remember that persistence is victory and evil thrives when good people do nothing. Just seek out the evildoers in your personal life and do everything you can to show them that what they're doing is wrong and create a repercussion for their harmful actions. Keep with it, and I can almost promise that you'll see good triumph at some point. Nike64 says, Believing the characters exist in the real world and seeing ponies in real life. I don't see humans, I see ponies! Help! You need help! And finally, my favorite. Map Ninja says, Dear Equestria Daily, <clears throat> I didn't learn anything. I've been a good friend all along. Sure, I could say that I learned to tolerate others for their differences and to not judge a book by its cover, but the truth is, I already knew that too. Good on you, sir. I felt the same way while reading a lot of these comments. My deal has always been that I've had a relatively strong conscience and learned a lot of these lessons at a very young age simply by listening to what my parents and pastors have told me having a desire to be the type of friend that I've always wanted to have, and applying the ideals with both practical first-hand experience and by observing what happens when those around me choose to be ignorant of them. Most other forms of entertainment treat their audience on such low-brow levels and either consciously or subconsciously justify or glorify a full cast of characters who are terrible people, thus encouraging their behaviors. I watch ponies because it carries the cute and innocent fun that we need much more of and aims to deliver good morals with almost every story that they tell. So even though Map Ninja and I didn't learn anything new, the show still brings about an inspiration for positive change in others who may not have had similar circumstances to either mine or whatever yours may be that helped us learn these things ahead of time, thus doing its small part to make the world a better place by teaching these lessons to those who didn't already know. So let's all be sure to keep it up, because I hope it continues for a long time. If you have a topic on bronies, ponies, news, or anything in general that you would like to hear discussed, or if you have an episode, fanfiction, product, or anything else you would like to hear reviewed, send me a YouTube message, or leave a comment below. You can also drop comments, questions, topic suggestions, and review suggestions by liking Brony Debates on Facebook, following on Twitter, or sending an email to bronydebates at yahoo.com. Have a great day, and I look forward to speaking with all of you soon.